Dying in a small hotel room by yourself, broke, penniless, only having pigeons for company, eating crackers and milk to survive, and then being found dead by the hotel maid would be a sad way to go for anyone, much less the greatest inventor the world has ever seen. Sad stories of people being taken advantage of come and go, but for Nikola Tesla, this was his whole life. While all he wanted to do was help out his fellow man with the hardships of life by creating things that would make this messy existence a little less bleak, all these years that I had spent in service of mankind brought me nothing but insult and humiliation. How did the pioneer of alternating current, x-rays, the hydroelectric power plant in Niagara Falls, the induction motor, and much more end up like this? Like with the fate of many great painters and geniuses, during Tesla's life, simpler minds resented him, and only after he died did people start to appreciate what he did for mankind. But this cloud of contempt for the inventor started at his birth. Being born of Slavic descent, he got no sympathy or even a fair shake from his Anglo-Saxon descent and counterparts in America, which is where he did most of his work. Everything from bad press to Thomas Edison flat out not paying Tesla for the work he did. We will ignore the propaganda and give credit where credit is due. To Tesla, along with all the other inventors that Edison took credit from. The interesting parts of Tesla's life didn't start until he reached America, but he was born on July 10, 1856. And already at his birth there are controversies. Because of the political and territorial landscape of the time, Tesla was born in Austria-Hungary, although he was Serbian. The Serbians would later contest some of this territory in the region, which would lead to World War I and later World War II. So many Western critics of Nikola Tesla like to mention he was born in Austria-Hungary or modern-day Croatia so they can conveniently avoid crediting the Serbian people with their contribution to society. In 1875, Tesla got his first taste of formal engineering training at the Austrian Polytechnic School in Graz. In 1882, he worked for the Paris branch of the Continental Edison Company, installing indoor lighting in the city. After being recognized for exceptional skill and talent, he was offered a job at Edison Machine Works in New York, which led him to meet Edison himself. At first they respected each other, but it wasn't long before Edison's Tom Fuckery started. Edison offered Tesla $50,000 to redesign 24 of his obsolete machines. And when he did this, Edison refused to pay him, playing it off as a joke, saying, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. I tried to find out how much 50K was in the late 1800s, but the inflation calculators only go back to like 1913. So the closest low ball estimate we have would have been somewhere around $1,511,076 in today's money. So Edison thought it was a funny joke to steal $1.5 million from somebody. What really would have been funny would be if Tesla shot him for that, because that's what I'd do if someone stole $1.5 million from me. Actually, let's keep a running total of how much money Tesla could have made if he was in it for the money instead of bettering mankind. Although Americans have a long-standing history of screwing over Serbians, like in their deal with the Serbian car company Zastava, where they just didn't pay them for the cars they imported, or bombing them for defending their homeland in the 90s, this type of shysty behavior from Edison wasn't an isolated event. Their initial animosity started over the disagreement of which current to use, Tesla being in favor of alternating current and Edison being in favor of direct current. This was because Edison already had patents for direct current and didn't want any competition. And even though Tesla's alternating current ended up winning out and being the smart choice that we all use today in our homes, that didn't stop a sadistic smear campaign by Edison. And it was sadistic because in order to discredit AC, Edison paid school children 25 cents to bring him household pets so he could electrocute them to scare the public of alternating current. And even after the war of currents was over, Edison was still electrocuting animals and even made a film electrocuting a circus elephant with 6,600 volts. So the guy is killing animals which is fucked up to begin with. And even after he lost the war of currents, he makes a snuff film killing an elephant back in a time when filming things wasn't even that easy. Like this dude really had to like killing animals to keep it up even after it didn't serve a purpose anymore. Then in March of 1885, Tesla was approached by investors to develop an improved arc lighting system. The group was willing to finance the new Tesla Electric Light Company, not to be confused with the Tesla Electric Company, which he would later establish. But when Tesla successfully completed this work, he was forced out of the company and left with worthless stock and called this the hardest blow in his life. So after not getting paid twice, he was reduced to digging ditches for $2 a day, questioning whether his education was worth anything. It's unclear how much money he lost out on in this deal, so a running total will remain at 1.5 million, 
But if this was the hardest blow, it's fair to assume it could have easily been even more than what Edison didn't pay. In 1887, during this time of hardship, he established the Tesla Electric Company, where he developed the induction motor, which was cheaper than direct current motors and better on maintenance, since the motor turns because of pushing magnetic fields that don't require contact, which means no rubbing parts or friction. By the way, this invention is listed as one of the top 10 inventions of all time, and we still use it every day in a lot of our household appliances. Have you used a refrigerator this year? Well, if you did, thank Tesla because they use single phase induction motors. But even though his inventions are in our everyday life, the guy hardly gets any credit. The people in the Nikola Tesla fan club somehow feel that he got wronged in his life, okay? And sh surely some of that is true with regard to patents. his business acumen yes. and patents and, and who owns the patent and who does, does he have good business sense? Is he as savvy or as, as sneaky, whatever other words you might apply to Edison, all right? So I get that. But his contributions to electromagnetism are real and recognized in the world of physics. Like I said, there's a unit of electromagnetism named after him. So don't come crying to me and say he was not recognized by my people, okay? He's recognized. Now, some of the people we look up to as the smart guys of today like to say, nah, nah, Tesla gets enough credit. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that up until recently, Tesla was an obscure figure. And I'm willing to bet that if Elon Musk didn't name his car company after Tesla, he'd still be an obscure figure. Just look at our own experience. How many of you guys learned about Tesla in high school? Let me know in the comments. Even though all of our classrooms use AC, I've never heard of the guy in school. I even graduated as an electrical engineer from one of the top colleges known for its engineering program. And I've still never heard any one of my professors utter his name, not once. Even when we went over his inventions, you can't become an electrical engineer without studying the induction motor. And none of the textbooks listed him. And believe me, I read and memorized those chapters and not one peep about Tesla. Tesla's new magnetic motor caught the eye of George Westinghouse, a big proponent in the electrical marketplace, who needed the motor to compete with Thomas Edison. Westinghouse bought the motor and hired Tesla as a consultant for $55,000 a month. And on July 7th, 1888, Tesla sold his patent for the AC polyphase system to Westinghouse for 25,000 cash, 50,000 in notes, and $2.50 royalty per horsepower generated by the motors. This sounds like a lot of cash on hand, but the real money was in the royalties per horsepower he was making. Seeing how widespread the motor became, this money was in the millions, and adjusted for inflation, the number would be so great, his wealth would have been immeasurable. Most of this was reinvested invested into laboratories and furthering his experiments and bettering mankind instead of personal greed. So we can add the lump sum payments he got from Westinghouse to the running total and we'll talk about what happened to his royalties in a minute. So 75,000 adjusted for inflation is 2.25 million bare minimum when added to the total is 3.75 million. Although the real figure is looking more like five, but we'll keep the low estimate for the sake of argument. In 1892, Westinghouse and Tesla together were competing with Edison for the opportunity to light the world's Columbian Exposition Fair. Westinghouse underbid Edison and got the job. This was significant because this got them a strong reputation, which secured them the contract to convert the power of Niagara Falls with a hydroelectric power plant. Shortly after, Tesla got some recognition from his own people, unlike in America. In 1894, Tesla was voted the corresponding member of the Serbian Royal Academy in Belgrade. He is quoted saying, If I would be fortunate to achieve some of my ideals, it would be on the behalf of the whole of humanity. If those hopes would become fulfilled, the most exciting thought would be that it is a deed of a Serb. Long live Serbdom. Yes, Tesla, long live Serbdom indeed. If you've made it this far in the video, type long live Serbdom in the comments. Although Elon Musk named his company after Nikola Tesla, he has some sharp words for him. Like Edison versus Tesla, because interesting, you know, the, the car company is called Tesla. Um, and the reason it's called Tesla is because we use an AC induction motor, which is an architecture that Tesla developed. Um, and the guy probably deserves a little more play than he gets in current society. Um, but on balance, I'm a bigger fan of Edison than Tesla. Um, because Edison brought his stuff to market and made those inventions accessible to the world, whereas Tesla did 
didn't really do that. I think Elon's opinions are contradictory to reality, as he did bring the hydroelectric plant to market, as well as the induction motor, the widespread use of AC, and probably more. I mean, the guy has 200 patents, so I'm sure I'm missing a few here and there. And at least when Tesla does bring something to market, it's a finished working product, not cars that catch fire and alpha builds of autopilot that crash people into walls. In 1895, a fire broke out and burned down Tesla's lab with most of his work in it. That same year, the first generator at Niagara Falls was ran at full speed, 250 revolutions per minute. When writing about this, Tesla said, Today I have entered the Congressional Office building, and at the middle of the Congressional session, asked for a couple of minutes of their time. They weren't very happy about it, but they let me. I asked for the telephone to call the laboratory at Niagara Falls. The boys over there activated the turbines, and the Congress Hall was lit up with my power, 10 times stronger than the regular one as I promised it would. I didn't care about their reactions at all. I instantly left the hall because I didn't do all of this for them, but for mankind. See, that's what I mean. He genuinely didn't care what people thought. He was solely in it for mankind's benefit. Most of us would love the money, fame, and recognition. And when we say we don't care what people think, deep down we actually do. But these actions show that deep down at his core, he was a true engineer. There for his craft, not pats on the back or a fat bank account. Now when we think of the first wireless communication slash radio slash telephone, we think about Marconi. Marconi and Tesla were working on radio roughly at the same time. Tesla had patents in the US and Marconi had patents in England. When Marconi tried to get his developments patented in the US, they were turned down because they were deemed too similar to Tesla's. But this didn't stop Marconi. He went ahead and sent the first wireless transatlantic message in 1901, using Tesla's patents to do so. When asked about Marconi, Tesla had the perfect response. Marconi is a good fellow. Let him continue. He's using 17 of my patents. Unfortunately, money talks in America, and the patent office changed its mind about its patent ruling when Thomas Edison gave his financial support to Marconi. So now Marconi had rights in the US, with Edison getting a cut of the profits. To add salt to the wound, Marconi got the Nobel Prize for this. After this, another legal battle took place, and only concluded six to eight months after Tesla died. The court did side in Tesla's favor because even they had to admit and correct the blatant wrongdoing that was committed. But it was too late. Tesla died before he could see this happen, and history remembers Marconi instead. Sorry Marconi, get the fuck out of town. This seems to be the pattern with science. Many inventors who developed the technology get the shaft in lieu of someone who was just louder about it or had more money. For example, who invented the light bulb? Edison, right? Wrong. Alessandro Volta developed the Voltaic Pile 76 years before Edison started making money off the light bulb. Okay, so you might say, like, that was a really bad version. And then Edison came in and made it better, right? Wrong again. This guy named Davy invented an electric arc lamp in 1802. So then you might think, well, that was a pretty crappy lamp, though, and Edison swooped in and made it more efficient, right? Wrong. This other other dude named Warren De La Rue made it more efficient in 1840. So then you might say, all right, all right, that was pretty expensive though, and then Edison came in and made it more cost efficient, right? Wrong. Another other dude named Joseph Swan solved that problem in 1850. So what Edison really did was he used Swan's light bulb and changed the type of filament. So four whole people were inventing and improving light bulb technology before Edison ever got involved. I'm not making this up, someone can fact check me on it. That's like if I made a slightly better windshield wiper and then everyone just started crediting me for inventing the car. Like yeah, he did it all by himself, no help at all. The Westinghouse company saw some financial troubles and asked Tesla if they could pause Tesla's royalty payments until they were in a better financial state. To which Tesla took the royalty contract and tore it up. This act saved Westinghouse from going under, and in the process Tesla gave up what would be worth around 300 million in today's money. But this act is not something Westinghouse would forget. At the turn of the century, Tesla would show how ahead of his time he really was. He started to put into motion a project that would advance wireless technology. Technology. A large wooden structure with a metal dome was constructed in Long Island, New York. He named this device Warden Cliff Tower. With capabilities of linking people together with communication devices, which humanity only saw a century later, this tower was to have capability to transmit power as well. The concept as described from the man himself. A telephone subscriber here may call up and talk to another subscriber on the globe. An inexpensive receiver, not bigger than a watch, will enable him to listen anywhere 
uh, land or sea, to a speech delivered or music played in some other place, however distant. In the same manner, any picture, character, drawing, or print can be transferred from one to another place. Millions of such instruments can be operated from but one plant of this kind. So Tesla had plans for the internet over a hundred years ago, and not some idea or sketch. He started building the tower, and he would have succeeded if the media at the time didn't scare off investors by calling it a hoax. Plus, they didn't see how they could profit from a device that couldn't regulate and charge people for power. Tesla was so ahead of his time, it was like that scene from Idiocracy where nobody believed that watering plants with water would make them grow because they were impatient to see the results. Like, imagine if investors didn't back out and he had full support. Where would we be today if the internet was invented in 1901? Without exaggeration, we'd be living like the Jetsons. We'd have memes like 100 years ago. After this, Tesla was bankrupt and living out of hotels and was slowly losing his mind, keeping pictures for company and only being able to afford milk and crackers for food. The Westinghouse company saw the terrible condition Tesla was in and decided to pay as a rent at the New Yorker Hotel as a thank you for saving their company long, long ago. One of the only acts of kindness that was returned to Tesla. Nikola Tesla died at the age of 86 on January 7, 1973, which just so happened to be Serbian Orthodox Christmas. Although our story of Tesla is concluded, I have waited until the end of the video to delve into some speculation, since only a fraction of the real viewers would make it this far. There are a great many inventors who claim they do not actually come up with the ideas they invent, but rather the ideas come to them from some sort of collective consciousness or storehouse of knowledge. This storehouse of knowledge is gone by many names from the ether, collective consciousness, matrix, or the field. The theory is that human thoughts are stored in this field and are accessible by the human mind under the right conditions. Some specific things that Tesla have said may give this theory some credence. In that very moment when I was looking at the lightning bulb to shine with my wireless electricity, I realized I wasn't the maker of all this. The law I thought I invented actually always existed. I was just the vessel blessed with inspiration to formulate and explain it to mankind. So my overbelief, and this is just an opinion which is why I saved it for the end, is that if these thoughts are to be pulled from the ether by inventors, someone had to have thought up the idea beforehand. And since we don't currently have that technology, yet the idea is in the ether, humanity must have been this advanced in the past and suffered some type of near extinction event which sent us back technologically, yet the ideas and inventions were still in the ether for us to reclaim later. Let me know if you think I'm crazy in the comments and like and sub and all that good stuff. How much shit goes on at like 3 a.m. in this town?